Okay, so in this video, we are going to be focusing again on singly linked lists, and we're going to see how one can rotate a singly linked list. So what does rotate actually mean? Well, let's take the following example here. We have a singly linked list with nodes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's say that we want to rotate this list with respect to, let's say, the fourth node. So it just happens coincidentally that the nodes are labeled with respect to the same order in which they appear. But if we want to rotate with respect to this fourth node right here, that would entail shifting or rotating everything that follows after that node and shifting it over to the front of the list. So for example, this, if we're rotating with respect to this as the pivot, if you like, we would end up with this list here. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, we've moved five and six to the front of the list. We have five, six, one, two, three, four. So I encourage you that if you haven't seen this before, if you want to practice to pause the video and try to solve it on your own before proceeding, if you have trouble, just unpause the video and we'll solve it together. So the way that we can go about solving this particular problem is by using essentially two pointers. So again, let's take the same list that we had from the example before and also the same uh, example where K, K is the uh, pivot, the, the node that we want to rotate with respect to. So we'll say in this case, K is again equal to four. So I've also explicitly labeled the head of the list because this will be uh, changing in the way that we approach this problem. So the head is here for now, and we've defined two pointers, P and Q. Initially, those pointers are set equal to the head, but we move them along K nodes. So essentially, K is four, so we move P and Q along one, two, three, four nodes. And actually what we do now is P and Q are both on this node here. We'll take Q and we want to move it to the end of the list, essentially to the last actual node of the list, the one right before null. So that's the next step. So now we have a pointer that points to the pivot node and also a node that points to the last element in this list as it stands currently. And what we want to do really is we want to reorient these arrows, these next pointers in such a way that will reorient the list that so, so it looks like this list here. So essentially we have five, six, one, two, three, four. So let's go back to that image here, this one right here. So what we want to do first, we want to, instead of having this node point to null, which it currently does, we actually want it to point to the current head of the list because remember we had five six one two three four so what we can do is we can say the next pointer the thing that this should point to won't be null but instead will be the first element of the list the head of the list so if we do that we change the next pointer to point to the first element of the list we have something that looks like a circular list so one two three four five six one two three four five six and so on so we don't want a circular list like this. We need to um, clean up a little bit more so we have the list that we're after. So we also have this pointer P, which points to the pivot node. And right now it points to five. The next pointer of this thing points to five. Instead though, what we want is we want this thing to point to null because really this is now the end of our list, the end of the new list. So what we can do is we can update that next pointer for, for where P is pointing to so that it points to null. And then we can also update the head of the list. So before the head of the list was this first node here, but since we have our new list that we want to be five, six, one, two, three, four, we need to make sure that we update the head of the list from this node all the way to this node over here. And that's pretty much all we need to do in order to rotate a linked list. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go and implement this in Python and see how we can actually translate this idea into code. Okay, so let's go ahead and code this thing up. So I've already defined a prototype rotate function here, which takes the parameter self, which it does because it's part of the class we've been constructing for this linked list series of videos. And it also takes the parameter k, which is the pivot with respect to uh, rotation. So I've also created a linked list object here, and I've populated it with the numbers one through six, just like we had in the slides. And what we can do now is we can go ahead and code this rotate function up. So let's just go back to the slides to refer to them to figure out what we need to do first. So the first step is to create pointers P and Q such that the P pointer is pointing to the kth node in the list and such that Q is pointing to the last node in the list. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, the way we're going to do that is we're going to initially 
uh, set them equal to the head of the list, and then we're going to walk them down until they come to their respective locations in this list. So let's go ahead and define a pointer P, which is equal to the head of the list, and also Q, which is also equal to the head of the list. And let's define a variable for the previous node. This will keep track of the previous node with respect to the current one as we move along in the list. And then we'll also define a variable count, which we'll set equal to zero. And this will keep track of when we hit K. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll say while P, so essentially while the, while the P node is not null, we'll move along in the list and count is less than K. So we're gonna keep track of when we hit the Kth node in the list. So we're gonna say, in this case, we're going to update the previous pointer. We're going to say p is equal to p dot next, q is equal to q dot next, and then we're going to increment the count variable by one. And then at the end of this, what we will have is we'll have, let's go back to the slides, we'll move this along until we get to k is equal to four. Actually, what will happen is we'll be on this node right here. So we want to set p equal to the previous node, which is why we are keeping track of the previous node. So we'll do that. We'll set p is equal to the previous node. So just to verify this actually did what we expected to do, let's go ahead and print out p.data, and let's go ahead and call this function here. So we'll say list.rotate, and we'll see what we get. And we also need to specify um, the thing that we're gonna rotate with, so let's give it the argument of four. We'll see what we get. So we get that the uh, kth element indeed is four, which is what we're after, because k we set equal to four. So p is now pointing to the data, to the element, the node, that has data element four. So now what we want to do is q is also there. Q is at five right now. We want to move q all the way to the end of the list, but we want to essentially have it point to the last node in the list. So we don't want it to point to null, but we want it to point to the last node in the list. So let's go back to the code and do that. Let me get rid of this print statement. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have another while loop. So while Q, so essentially while Q is not none, we're going to move it right along. So we're going to say, again, keep track of the previous value in this case. And then we're going to say Q is equal to Q dot next to move it along in this linked list. And then just like we did for P, we'll say Q is equal to the previous node. So again, we can also just verify that the data element at Q is the data element that we're after, in this case, six. So let's go ahead and print out Q dot data just to verify that is the case. Indeed, we have six as the data element at the node that we're on there. So we have P and Q, the pointers positioned as we do in this slide here. So what we want to do now is we want to update some pointers. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to update the next pointer of Q. So Q dot next should point to the head of the list. That's what we want to do next. Let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do is we want to say Q dot next is equal to the head of the list. Okay, and what's the next thing that we want to do? So we've got that, so q.next is equal to the head of the list. Now what we want to do is we want to update the head of the list to go to the, um, the proper place. In this case, that would be the next place of p. So p is at this pivot here, and we want the head of the list to be this 5. So the next element of p is the new head of the list. So we can update that by saying self.head is equal to p.next. And then finally, we want to make sure, let me just go back to the slides again. So we've, if we update the head of that, we want to make sure that we set this next element of P, we want to set this equal to none. So we essentially just want to make sure that the next element of this guy right here points to null. So if we do that, all we need to do is say P dot next is equal to none. And that will pretty much do what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and let me um, call this rotate function. Let me print out the list beforehand. So let me print out, uh, let me say list.printList. So this is before the list has been rotated. We'll print it out once. I'll also print out a new line. So let me just print out a new line here. I'll rotate the list with pivot four, and then we'll also print out the list after rotation. So we'll say print list here again. Let's go ahead and save that and we'll run it and see what we get. 
So indeed we have the original list, which was printed out numbers one through six, a new line, and then the rotated list. So we have one, two, three, four back here, and five and six have been rotated uh, with respect to the pivot here up at the front of the list. So that pretty much does it for this video. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. If you have any comments, questions, or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks again for all the support and subscriptions, and I'll see you next time.